Hello everyone, in this video we're gonna go over a liquid phase reactor design problem. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, chill for a second and I'm gonna let you guys read the problem on your leisure for a while. So pause the video, give the problem a read. Three, two, one. Okay, I hope you guys have given the problem a thorough, a thorough read so that now I can read it with you guys. So let's say, oh, you own an engineering firm. That's a, that's a good for you. That's a good for you. Okay, good. The above reaction, the above reaction, we have a liquid phase reaction. Oops, sorry. There was a, uh, my bad. There was supposed to be a, a, a phase symbol here that I'm missing. My bad, my bad, my bad. Okay, I'm going to take the blame for that. All right. So let's see. Uh, the reaction needs to be carried out in a CSTR. Okay, a continuously stirred tank reactor. The conversion desired by our client is 80%. Okay, we've been given a number. I want to react 80%, but of what? It's gonna be obviously the limiting species. It's obviously gonna be the limiting reagent. All right, 80% of the limiting reagent, of limiting reagent. So just, just so you guys remember your general chemistry, okay? It's always gonna be the limiting reactant. I did not mean reagent, the limiting reactant, okay. Process info, we know the inlet flow rate, we know the inlet concentrations, T in, T out. Okay, pause the video for a second again. And I want you guys to tell me which which one of which of the reactants, A or B, A or B is the limiting species. Pause the video, give it a thorough read. Okay, I hope you guys have thought about it. And it turns out that in this in this problem, A is the limiting reactant because one mole of A has to react with two moles of B. So, let's see. Oh, uh, my, units, my units are not correct here. My bad, sorry. My units are not correct, my bad. Mole per meter cube, mole per meter cube, my bad. I'm sorry for the, for the confusion, my bad. Blue per real, sorry. So A is my reactant species, okay. All right, let's see, let's see. Uh, I have my process info, my inlet flow rate, my inlet concentrations, and I've been told that the inlet and outlet temperature are the same. This means that my reactor is operating isothermal, isothermally, so I have isothermal operation. That's good. I have my kinetics expression here. I've been given my kinetics expression. Very good. And the reaction is first order with respect to A, first order with, order with respect to B. So a total order of 1 plus 1. Okay, good. And I've also been given the rate constant. Okay, very nice. And I hope that this is enough information for me to go out and design an ideal CS an ideal reactor. In this case, the CSTR. All right. And uh, let's uh, start off by listing our assumptions. Our assumptions for this uh, engineering design. First off, since we're designing a continuously since we're de designing a continuous reactor, our first assumption obviously is gonna be steady state. And obviously we're operating isothermally. Okay, since we've been told T in and T out are the same, and we are in the liquid phase, so we're gonna assume incompressible fluid, incompressible flow. And if you have incompressible flow, that means that your exit volumetric flow rate is equal to your inlet volumetric flow rate, all right? Keep that in mind, keep that in mind. And, all right, what else? And since we're designing a CSTR, and we're gonna have the well-mixed assumption, this is the assumption for a CSTR. This is the assumption for a continuously stirred tank reactor, CSTR. Very good, okay. Now let's, uh, let's start off with our design equation. Our design equation is gonna be our first starting point and then we're gonna reverse engineer. We're gonna see uh, information we need. The volume of the CSTR. The volume of the CSTR is equal to the uh, inlet flow rate of your species A times the desired conversion divided by the rate expression for A. That's my first equation, my design equation. And I wanna find my volume, the, my sizing parameter, the volume of the reactor. I know my desired conversion. I know my desired conversion. I want 80%. But so far, my what's my inlet flow rate? What's my inlet molar flow rate? Let's see. I don't have a. Uh, I haven't explicitly told. 
I haven't been explicitly told what's my inlet motor flow rate, and I I haven't explicitly been told what's the uh, value, what's the value of the rate law at the exit conditions. Keep in mind that this is evaluated at exit conditions for a CSTR, evaluated at exit conditions. All right, keep that in mind. So let's see, um, for my inlet volumetric flow rate, it's gonna be my inlet, inlet molar flow rate, inlet molar flow rate is gonna be equal to my inlet volume metric flow rate times the inlet concentration. And this, all right, this comes out to be my equation two. Next up, all right, the rate expression, the rate at which A is disappearing is equal to negative times K, C, A, C, B. Make sure, uh, since A is a reacting species, it's gonna be equal to negative times the concentrate times the product of the concentrations and the rate constant. So once I combine these three equations, I'm gonna combine these three equations. Let me let me zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna combine these three equations. All right, I'm gonna combine these three. And my resulting expression, let's see how that's gonna look like. Let's, uh, all right. The volume of the CSTR is gonna equal my inlet volumetric flow rate times inlet concentration times the desired conversion divided by okay negative k exit concentration of a and exit concentration of b the negatives cancel out we know some algebra all right so far let's see and now we need to now i need to know what are my exit concentrations what are my exit concentrations? What is my exit concentration of A? And what is my exit concentration of B? That's something I still need to worry about. I know my inlet volumetric flow rate, my inlet concentration, my desired conversion, and my rate constant. So let's see. For the exit concentration of A, is gonna be equal to the inlet concentration multiplied by one minus the conversion okay that's just stoichiometry that's just stoichiometry refer to chapter four refer to chapter four of fogler okay i'm gonna please refer to chapter four of fogler fifth edition 